you're in this extraordinarily beautiful place with so much to do, rock climbing and going to the mountains and skiing and partying on campus and partying on the hill. And then you have this, this counterbalance with the seriousness of, of that era, of that war, of the political environment. So much changed in those four years. The campus culture from 67 to 71 was wonderful, in my opinion. It was college, it was all of the good things, but there was an overview of the Vietnam War that had a lot of impact on how people felt. The Vietnam War was ever present. We were conscious of it because either our friends from high school were in Vietnam at the time, the men on campus were challenged because of they were all tracking their draft numbers. It was very kind of a threatening environment, an unstable environment for them. So I would say the war had uh, quite, a, quite an imprint on us at the time. A draft was inevitable. And a lot of the fellow guys we went to classes with and were friends with, we were concerned about them. So we sat in the house, in the sorority house, on the night the draft was going on and we listened for numbers. We knew their numbers and waited to see if their numbers got called up because we were just as afraid for them as probably their families were. The energy on campus was uh, really dynamic. There were strong factions, but loose boundaries. And it wasn't unusual for uh, ROTC students and hippies to be attending to the same issues on the same side and then be at odds the following day on a different issue. I was writing back and forth to a Vietnam soldier during my junior year of college, ended up marrying the guy. But I, it gave me an inside take on what was happening over there. And then I could kind of compare it to what I was hearing over here from other people. I remember meeting boys on the hill or at the restaurants who had just come home from Vietnam and uh, them talking about trying to integrate back into if they should go to college or if they should get a job and just the, um, the silence that was in them regarding their experience. And then I would try to find out, oh, what was it like? And I'm all, you know, bubbly and positive and, oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> it's like so yeah. stupid uh, for the times, you know, not being aware of the damage that had been done and just think of it as an experience and just remembering the pain that and the silence that uh, surrounded mm. them yeah. and the, the fear of what do I do now and am I being judged uh, for being there when everyone's against it. Well, I remember quite clearly the moratorium against the war, which included a candlelight march around most of the perimeter of the campus. And there's even some shots existing of the procession going down the sidewalk on Broadway. I think the hippie movement influenced me because I felt they were courageous to take on that lifestyle. It was a kind of a thing to go to San Francisco, to Berkeley. I had friends who did that, and then they came back, and I'd see them on the hill, and I thought, gosh, you know, I just don't have the courage to do that. So much happened in, in that short period of time that all of a sudden, out with the skirts, and we have the bell bottoms on, and the long shirts, and the long hair, and we didn't, I wasn't a hippie, but we certainly were part of the vibe. It was part of, we were reacting to so much that was going on in this nation because we weren't conventional anymore. We had the liberty to adopt these new concepts and, I, and these new identities and really start thinking for ourselves. Well, the hippie culture to me was also a freedom culture. And it was a very important time for women, for us just power that was coming to women that had not existed prior to that. So many of our men were gone in the Vietnam War that it put women in leadership roles. So they were working more, they were getting the jobs, 
while they were a student or after they were a student. Uh, it just, women were becoming more their own persons. They weren't just in a man's world. Well, the empowerment of women was, I think, just developing, and I was just developing. I was an 18-year-old. I was away from home for the first time. So I think it was a gradual learning of, wow, listen to what they're talking about. Listen to what these women are saying and what they were saying that we could be and what we could do. And it changed a lot of people and it changed relationships with people. You know, your relationships with boyfriends and husbands and how you were gonna run your home and things like that. I think the world events that were happening when I was in school in the late 60s felt just as traumatic as those that are happening now. The riots were so frightening. The, the war was so frightening. And yet, being on campus did feel like a safe place, both to discuss those issues and um, just to live. When I was on campus, um, having come from a small town, it was such a lively, energetic, and international experience to come to see you. It was just very interesting to see people from so many states with so many different attitudes. And they would be speaking at the fountain and expressing their views openly. No, nothing of that had I ever seen before. So I came out to see you from Maryland, and so I was a long way from home, didn't really have anybody else out here that I knew, so I got to know a lot of people. But it was always fun to go back and tell my friends back there, wow, you should see Boulder. First time I came in as a freshman with my parents who were ready to unload me here, I was a little overwhelmed. There's so much here. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna have time to do? You know, how's it gonna be going to school here? Things were just popping off in my head. And you have these little orientation groups and you immediately meet some of the kids and then it was like, off to the hill, off to the sink, we have to find out what this is all about. <laughs> so. I was a cheerleader through high school and I thought, well, of course I'd like to try out for cheerleading at CU. And I made it. We had these big bulky gold and white sweaters, little short skirts and cowboy hats. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. So I came to see you because it was a big school and I wanted athletics and I wanted lots of options for majors and things like that. And I was so excited to be a fan of the football and basketball teams and um, loved it. The basketball team was playing in the field house so we were very close. It was a very intimate setting. It was wonderful. And Cliff Mealy was the star. And then football, we had many good players. Uh, Cliff Branch stands out as one of my favorites, uh, running up the sideline and scoring for us. You know, I think at the time, the school spirit was pretty extraordinary. We had a great football team. And of course, all the traditions around homecoming, you'd get these beautiful mum corsages and go to all the events. And it was really uh, quite something. And then being on the cheerleading squad, you could be part of the energy and the excitement of the day and be driving that and you'd be, have Rolfie on the field and you have the pom-pom girls. So I think it, it, was, it was fantastic. Living in Farrand Hall as a freshman, one of my fondest memories was listening to the marching band practice always for about an hour or so before the football games on every Saturday. I remember the football games were just full of pure enthusiasm and cheering. There was nothing but just love for the Buffaloes. I always loved driving into Boulder and seeing the campus, that architecture and those red tile rooftops, are they're just part of it and you can't ignore it. The biggest difference, I think, physically in CU is the size, size of the campus, the density of the campus, uh, the investment, which is, you know, we should be proud that uh, the university has been able to build extraordinary facilities. Um, but they were simpler back then, and we had that beautiful context of the red sandstone buildings. 
which the architecture has been retained. I think giving, giving the campus the same identity, but it's just more dense. You see the aerial photo of this area. This is the heart of the campus. That line from the auditorium through the old main to the most modern building at the time. It's been fun watching campus change over the years. It's, it stays so much the same, and yet it feels like there's a tree missing from right over here. Giant oak tree. See the little depression there, right not too far from the sidewalk? That was the biggest tree on campus. My favorite building on campus was the library uh, because I thought that there were so many private little nooks and crannies for going to study. The library was important because it was quiet and I could find a little nook, I, I could focus. I was very impressed with Norlin Library at the time. It was, it was magnificent and a great place to be. And then just all of the outdoor areas. The exterior of this campus is just so beautiful. Yeah. Mackey Auditorium was always my favorite building because I had all my journalism classes there. I think the UMC was a place you can hang, have your meals, uh, you'd see people coming and going, the fountains outside where you could be when the weather was great. I have good memories of the UMC. Our boulder was the hill, and the hill was wonderful. And the sink and Tulagi's where we could dance, because you can't do that anymore. Uh, the sink's still there, though. The day that I got married, September of uh, 1969, right here in Boulder, as soon as the wedding was over, the both of us went, I in my wedding gown, his, him in his tux, and we went to the sink and had cheers and 3-2 beer with our friends, and I haven't been there since. <laughs> So this afternoon, my girlfriends and I are gonna go to the sink and have lunch together. I can talk about CU in Boulder all day long. I just ask my sons because it was my frame of reference for my entire life. I have four older siblings and they all went to CSU and I didn't. And I just can tell the difference in how we perceive the world and, and issues around us. And I will be forever grateful for that. As with any student, those are critical years of maturity. You know, generally speaking, between the ages of 16 and 22, it all takes place. And if you don't come out of that tunnel being a good person, you're gonna have a hard time changing after that. I was so lucky that I could come out to Boulder from the East Coast, and I think it affected me the rest of my life that I had that growth to be away from home so much and find this wonderful new part of the country that I was not familiar with. And I ended up moving back here a few years after graduation and ended up working at the University of Colorado for over 30 years. My time here was a time that I grew up, and I really came to know more of who I was. Not totally, but I was more aware of myself, had more confidence. The biggest lesson I learned at CU was to stick with it. It's amazing what you can do if you just keep at it. You know, my biggest lesson learned at CU was to keep your mind open. Just keep it open. Don't. Don't assume, make sure you talk to the person first. Attending CU helped shape my views of the world and to making it more broad, being less intimidated by people with other points of view. It was a time where so many individuals with so many different perspectives came together and voiced our concerns around human rights, around minorities, around the war. It was a place for intense conversation. It was a place for people having their voices heard. This was critical at that time. We, you know, it's much like today. So much was changing so fast, and people were entering into these public spaces, fighting for their rights.